you still saved us. While we were yet in sin, God, you sent Jesus to save us. Who am I, Lord God? Who are we that you would even consider us, that you would take out your energy, your effort, your time, your love to rescue us from our decision? To rescue us from our foolishness. To rescue us from all of the despicable things that we've done in our lives, Lord God. But you, you, you sent your love. You loved us so much. You just, you loved us so much that you sent Christ into the world. Not only did you send him, Lord God, you sent him and you put him in our place. The punishment, the pain, the anguish, the suffering that we Son, to go through all of that just for us. And God, for that we thank you. But we're not going to ask for a Cadillac today, a new house, a new job. We're not going to ask you for anything right now, Lord God. We're just going to thank you, God. We're just going to glorify and magnify your name for who you are. And because you loved us. And now we're just going to take this opportunity to love on you, Lord God. And say thank you. Because we already know the souls are going to be saved. We already know.
this time we have our prior coming. Amen. Same father. <laughs>
Christ choir. And after they come, we'll hear the preach word by Overseer Carter. And at that time, we will stand and receive it. Amen. Can you remember that?
every evil work. Verse number 16. I'm sorry, I thought I gave you guys. Romans 3 and 16. I didn't say that. I didn't want to say this. I must say it was Y'all read Romans 3 and 16. For oh, where am I? What am I? Am I not reading? No. Technology is okay, but sometimes I ain't that crazy about it. Amen. I sometimes I just give it. Oh, you're right. I do want James. I'm sorry. The book of James, chapter 3. Yeah, technology good, but sometimes I don't like it. I think I'm going to stick to my regular King James. I, I, I just like the old word. Amen. Even though it's King James, but technology good. You touch the page and it flips on you. You don't touch it because you know, it's touch technology. Yeah. I'm sorry. James 3, verse 16. I give you a chance to get it. That's my fault. Sorry about that. We'll, we'll clean that up for you. Amen. I'm just getting used to this technology stuff. Since everybody using it, I'm trying to get up to speed. All right. Are, are we getting there? Are we good? All right. You shouldn't have been that far away. All right. You shouldn't have been that far away. Okay. Three. Sixteen. Are ready? For we're in the for where envy and strife is, there is what? Confusion and every evil work. So what do people say in the church? God's not the author of confusion. No, he ain't. Touch your neighbor, you're in. You're in. You're in. Touch it. It's all of us. Touch it. Every last one of us. We're so Stand up for me! Yeah. Why would 
talking about earthly work. I ain't talking about getting to heaven because you notice what is the heavenly work that don't mess us up. It's the earthly work that causes the issues. You think I'm wrong? I know I'm right about it. Why she got to leave every song? That's earthly work. Why you don't ever ask me to leave? Oh, I mean, man, why, why they got to always uh, 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 to call their name? They don't ever call my name. That's earthly stuff. Why don't they ever, ever buy me a ticket? They bought somebody else a ticket. That's earthly stuff. I'm just trying to help somebody. You, you need to understand that. That see, God is not confused. You're confused. You're it. You are the problem. Because if I bought the ticket for somebody else, first of all, it's my money.
your life that you needed to have to remain the same. Now because I'm not on the same page as you, now all of a sudden it becomes a problem and it's not my problem because if it was a problem I would have dealt with it then, but now it's a problem because you are the one that has the problem with what I did. Amen. You, you look at Jesus. Let me make it right there. Jesus came and, and when he came, all of a sudden the kings had a problem with him and also the church had a problem with him simply because they felt he was invading their space. King of the Jews. Well, I'm already the king, man. You ain't even the king here. I am. I'm already the king. I, Jesus did not even come to invade their space. He, he didn't come to take over Israel. He said, I'm the king of kings. Yarn ball. Uh -huh. 
Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy. Praise the Lord. 1 Timothy chapter 3. Timothy chapter 3, verse number 6. Show you what the devil can do. Because mm -hmm, he needs something else. Let's see that. Okay. Let's see. Okay. All right, are we there? Okay. Timothy chapter 3, verse number 6. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see what it says. Let's see what it says. It says, not a novice. Lest be lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation of the devil. God is not the wait, I think, wait a minute, so you don't think you've been in some of y'all don't think y'all been in the by the devil. But I believe that it says that envy and strife, there is confusion of evil work. Evil work from the devil. Don't come from the Lord. But the wisdom of is from above, is pure, peaceful, and gentle. Now this says, you can't be a novice, let's be lifted up with pride, you fall into condemnation of the devil. See, when your pride comes into a situation, God is no longer in this. You can't be saved and unsaved at the same time. Something, when you start acting ugly, there got to be the devil in you. You know what I'm saying? I don't care how saved you are. Amen. The Bible says the two spirits will not dwell together. So the thing about it is, I need to realize that when I'm not looking so good to you and to myself, the devil must have influence at that time. He has now taken over because there ain't no way in the world God gonna start cussing. And I, 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 there ain't no way in the world. Amen. God gonna start ridiculing, belittling somebody, talking down.
But you gotta let that pride go. You gotta let it go. Hey, don't talk to me any kind of way. Ain't no way in the world they gonna talk to me like that. How they gonna walk past me and not speak? Why are you so upset because someone walked past you and don't speak?
going to talk. That you were going to be a lover of yourself. And that you were going to be covetous. And you were going to be boastful. Uh huh. Proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. Because I don't go with them. Yeah. <laughs> 
don't even know my name. But if they knew my name, they would call me that. But apparently they don't know my name, so it's okay. They're not that important to me. You gotta learn to stop letting people be so important in your life that they aggravate you. Because you get in trouble not with people to aggravate you. If you think I'm wrong, you need to learn to read your Bible. It tells you what happened when Moses got aggravated. Because of the people. I know you have a river, I got a right. I know you ain't got no right. Leave God's people alone. They want to act dumb, let them act dumb. You get aggravated, then you allow them to track you down to their level. Somebody needs to tell me, what are you going to do? Because they did. 
did you wrong on the planet now. And you better go back to the cross because it was two weeks hanging there. And they said we deserve what we got. These guys had robbed folks, killed folks, done everything they were big enough to do. And don't tell me that some of them folks wasn't saved and they're going to go to heaven. And the thing about it is what they going to do when they get there? And that sinner that was on the cross, the person that you could not stand, the person that robbed you, the person that talked about you, God let them in because they repented of their ways and they're in glory. And then all of a sudden you show up and they're there. What are you going to do then? Because you know you ain't fighting in front of them, but they ain't going to happen. You can't go into heaven with animosity in your heart against your fellow man. Hatred in your heart against your fellow man. I understand we do each other wrong. We got issues. We got things. Come on, we're all human beings. Come on, be real about it. You know you done talked about somebody. You done did somebody wrong to come. Be real. Stop acting like you're so pure. You ain't never did none of the same stuff that somebody did to you. All of a sudden, we call ourselves Christians, but we do not exemplify that or even show that to a world. And if we want the body, they won't come to church. They're not coming. Because we do the same thing. We treat people the same way. And we treat fellow Christians even worse. Because then we go home and talk about the saints. I know we do. We go home and talk about it. Talk about it. Because we got to share it with somebody. And there's a bell. Go red shirt. They treat you like that. I know how they treat me, baby. And then they're not really talking about this church. They think it was like a church period. Church folk is a mess. Have you heard that? We're our own greatest enemy. We're our own greatest enemy. That which a man speaketh, that which he is. We need to understand that. We need to speak good about the church. We need to keep the kids out of our mouths. If you're not going to speak good about getting kids, forget it. Just let it go. Seriously. People ask me all the time, how's the church? Great. Doing good. Uh, God's doing his thing. Is everything perfect? No, no. I'm not doing it. I know I'm not crazy. But I believe God is doing what he does. But it's still good. That's right. It's still good. I'm not going out here and talk negative about churches that aren't pastoring. That's right. Why would you want to go out and talk negative about the church that you belong to? That's right. That's right. Why don't you come in here and tell me about your drama book that was at the family reunion? Right. Why don't you tell me about your crazy kids that ain't acting right? Because they're your family. Ain't that what you said? That's my family. It ain't none of y'all's business.
forward right now. I need a pastor that's going to love me, a pastor that's going to pray for me, a pastor that's going to go to the throne of mercy for me.